Good day and welcome to another PolyDye video. Today we're going to show you how to select and slice a model for 3D printing in color using PolyDye. First, what we will need to do is open up the blend file that comes with the GitHub repo and open that up in Blender 4.1. PolyDye only supports Blender 4.1 currently, but we intend to support later versions in the future as well. When you open up the blend file, you will see this screen where we will prepare our model for slicing. We have our build plate here as well as two position markers that are used during printing. These position markers are locked and they can, and, and this is the only one that can move on an axis. This one is locked and should not be moved. The first thing we'll need to do before preparing our model is to install the slicing plugin. So we are we do that by going to edit, preferences, install, navigating to the correct folder and selecting the Python file. We then check this little checkbox and polyslice is installed. We also need to install the 3D print toolbox, which we do by searching for print in the search box and also just selecting it. This comes pre-installed with Blender. Once done, we can hit Save Preferences and you will see here on the right hand side we will have some new options here. You can control this menu by pressing N. So the next thing we will need to do is to select a model that we are going to slice and I'll take you through each of these different settings while we do so. So where do we find models to print using PolyDye? There are a couple of sites that have some models that PolyDye supports. Sites like Sketchfab, Fab and CG Trader have models that are compatible. You will basically either need a GLB file, which is the one we recommend, or an OBJ file with a texture, but that is a little bit harder to set up in Blender. In order to successfully slice a model with PolyDye, the model needs to be watertight and have a texture as well. Typically, models that are AI generated or 3D scans uh, work the easiest with PolyDye currently as they only have one mesh and one texture, which is ideal. We are now going to import a model. Uh, I've created a little cat using AI and we're going to go to File, Import, GLTF. We are then going to navigate to where I saved it and we'll see it here, polycat.glb. I'm going to select it and the model is imported. The next thing we will do is navigate over to PolySlice and then as you can see, the model is slightly below the scissors which we do not want, we want it perfectly placed in the build platform so therefore we are going to put below the build plate and, and cut it off a bit so it fits nicely on the build plate we have a sync amount which, which drops it a certain, certain amount of the build plate like so and then we use the trim bottom button to trim it Next up, we will select the output directory where our renders will be saved. Next, we will select the file name of the SDL file that will be generated. Polycat123. Please note that on the first layer height and layer height settings here, they need to match with the slicer you will be using, preferably Orca slicer. So between those two, these two values must match when slice, slicing each, each each part. We are now ready to slice the model and we do so by clicking on the slice button. What this does is it prepares each slice as well as renders a preview for body print. This does take a couple of minutes so I'm going to skip ahead in the video. Once done you will see some changes have been made to some of the models in the scene like this position tower here and our model has been sliced into a hole 
lot of different slices. We now need to render these slices to our output folder as well as save the STL file name. We do this by hitting the render say output button which prepares each slice. This also takes a couple of minutes so once again I'll skip ahead. Once slicing has been completed you will see a screen that looks like this with no fur further modifications being made to any pictures. Once it is in this state we can navigate over to the output folder we selected where all the rendered slices have been saved as well as an STL and a preview render. Once we are in polyprint we will click the align button, navigate to the folder that we used as output in Blender and select all the files in there and click open. This will prepare the G-code file and images for printing. Once the alignment step has been completed, a zip file containing your sliced model will be downloaded to your downloads folder. We can then unzip that zip file and copy the contents to your SD card and we are ready for printing. Thank you for joining us for this quick video. If you want to see more and stay up to date what's happening in color 3D printing, please like and subscribe to this video and we will see you next time.